Okay, so um, our Father and our King, we thank you, we honor your name, we bless your name, we give you praise, we give you honor, we give you adoration, we worship you because you are a good God and a faithful God. You are the King of all flesh, you are the God who is able to do all things. Father Lord, we welcome you to our class this morning. As we study your word, we ask that your word will do us good in the name of Jesus. Thank you, God of heaven. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so, yes, as you come in, please help me call other people to come in because I had to switch on to the audio um, broadcast as the video was giving a bit of an issue. So if you are in, please, yes, welcome. Invite others to come in. Invite others to come in. I'm going to do my best and share the link in other places so that others will come in. But what this means is that we're not streaming on YouTube, neither are we streaming on Periscope like we had planned to do, because this is not, um, this just didn't work. Um, so yes, so we're going to have an audio broadcast now. I'm going to just share the link and then we can start. We've lost a few minutes already because of the issue with the um, apparently coronavirus is affecting our, our internet as well. God will help us in Jesus name. Things will go back. The Lord will soon bring us out of this. As soon as we learn our lessons, we will be out of this soon in Jesus name. Okay, so I think I'm done. Um, if you're here and you're a member of the Command Your Morning group, then please share. Okay, so is this fine? Can you hear me here? If you can hear me, please let me know. If you can hear me, please let me hear, know because, um, can you hear me? Good morning, Uncle Noah. I can see you. Good morning. Can everybody hear me? Can everyone hear me? Okay, so I can do this as well. All right, great. Good morning then. So what we said we were going to do was to begin a study of the book of Joshua. And we'll continue like we said and we'll study. Hopefully our, our internet will be stronger next week so that we can have a video. But if we can't have a video, this is just fine. The word would, um, the word would do just good. So Joshua chapter 1 is the our focus today. And I wish we could do this every day so that before all of this is over, we would have finished studying the book of Joshua. But I don't think I have that ex I have that strength to do that. So I'm going to do one chapter a week. But before we go into Joshua at all, I want us to go to Exodus 33. Exodus 33, I want us to listen and uh, to read verse 11. Exodus 33, verse 11. In Exodus 33, verse 11, it says, And the Lord spake unto Moses face to face, as a man speaketh unto his friend. And he turned again into the camp. But his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, departed not out of the tabernacle. Hallelujah. Now, if I will background this a bit, we are looking at the book Joshua, named after the man Joshua. The man Joshua is the son of Nun, one of the 12 spies that were sent by Moses to do, go and do a recon on Egypt, on the promised land and bring news to the people. If you read your numbers, the book of numbers properly, you will find out that in that book of numbers, when they came back, only Joshua and Caleb gave a good report, like they could go and then they can take the land. Everybody has said that they saw uh, um, giants in the land, in the land that the Lord had promised them, that is the promised land. And because of that, that they were not able to take the land. But not Joshua. Joshua was... Um, intentional and Joshua did say that it was possible for them to take the land so now we are in the book of Joshua apparently named after that same Joshua and what we want to do with out of the book of Joshua is take a look at how to take territory because for many of us what you may not know right now is that this will not last forever there is an end to all that we're going through right now. And because there is an end to all that we're going through right now, we want to be sure that we are those people who are ready, who are ready to take the land. We want to be one of those people who are ready to take the land that will open up 
you know, because of this, um, of all that has happened in the earth leading up to this point. So in Joshua chapter 1, we see how Joshua came into this land. But the first thing I want us to learn, even before we begin to read out of Joshua, the first thing I want us to pay attention to is that the man that God will use, God will prepare. The man that God will use, God will prepare. So Joshua was that man that God was going to use to bring the children of Israel into, it, into the promised land. But before God even used Joshua, God prepared him. God prepared him. And it is also essential for me to say that God did not forcefully prepare Joshua. Joshua was one of those ones who agreed or submitted to be prepared. So we see in Exodus 33, what had happened in Exodus 33 or leading to Exodus 33 was that the children of Israel had gotten to Mount Sinai and they had camped there. They had camped there and God came to Moses in, I, I believe it's Exodus 20, and started to talk to Moses to say, look, I want to, these people to speak to me one-on-one. -on -one. I want them to have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with me. But the people of Israel were so afraid because of the thunderings and lightnings that, it, that the, erupted because of the voice of God and said to Moses, we don't want to have anything to do with God one-on-one. -on -one. What we want is you go to God, talk to God and come back and tell us whatever God will say. So David now went outside the camp of the people and set up something called the tabernacle of meeting or the tent of meeting. What that meant was the tent of meeting was the place where Joshua, um, sorry, um, Moses and God always had a meeting. So when God needed to say something to, to Moses, he would say, Moses, come to the tent of meeting. Moses will go to the tent of meeting and God will speak to him from that place. So that was what they did. On this day that is recorded in Exodus 33, Moses came as was his manner to have a conversation with God. And I, he took with him his servant Joshua. Because Joshua was the one that was Moses' um, if you like, armor bearer through the course of Moses' um, ministry. So Joshua came with Moses into the camp of meeting. And I imagine that they were on their face for a long time, just worshiping God and listening to the things that God would say. But something has happened. The moment the Moses finished talking to God, obviously God would have given him a message for the people. Moses got up <coughs> and returned to the camp to go and tell the people what God had said, but not Joshua the young man. Genesis 33 verse 11, the beep part says, and he turned again into the camp, but his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, departed not out of the tabernacle. What that means was that Joshua was molded in the presence of God. He followed Moses to see how Moses interacted with God and transacted with God. That was one level of training. And the second level of training was Joshua was never in a hurry to leave the presence of God. What am I trying to establish? I'm trying to establish two things. The man that will take territory for God, number one, will be discipled by another. Number one, will be discipled by another. Because it was in the place of discipleship that jo uh, Joshua learned everything that God has said to Moses and how God did dealt with Moses. The second thing about the man that would take territory is the man that would take territory will be that man that would list, that would tarry in the presence of God. The man that would take territory after all of this is over is one the man who has been discipled to the man who has made the presence of God something that is valuable to him. The man that is not in a hurry to go and do stuff, but will spend time with God as much as it's possible. I've been telling people that I really don't have a problem with the lockdown. And the reason I don't have a problem with the lockdown is I am my own friend with God. I can stay in my room for two, two months as long as I'm not hungry. If you guys can pass my food under the door, and make sure I have data to be able to watch and listen to word and maybe okay, um, bling, um, sometimes watch Netflix. I'm my own friend. But Joshua wasn't watching Netflix. He was flat on his face in the tabernacle of the meeting. No wonder when it was time, no wonder when it was time for God to deal with him. 
No wonder when it was time for God to deal with him, God, it was not hard for God to be able to say to Joshua, I can speak with you. It was not hard at all. It was not hard at all for God to be able to do the things that he needed to do with Joshua. But just put it there that if you want to be the man that would take territory for God, if you want to be the man that all the promises that he has spoken in this time, you will walk into them and you will lead others into, you will be the man, number one, you will be the man that does what? That tarries in the presence of God. And you'll be the man that someone else had mentored, or I don't like the word mentoring in this regard, but discipled over time. So let's now go to the book of Joshua chapter 1. Let's go to Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1 is a very short verse of the Bible compared to other verse, other um, ch short chapter of the Bible compared, compared to many other chapters. It has only 18 verses. So we will do our best to rush through all of Joshua chapter 1 today. It opened and it says, now it happened. I'm reading the amplified version. Now it happened after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' servant or attendant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise to take his place. Cross over this Jordan, you and all the people, into the land which I'm giving to them, to the sons of Israel. I have given you every place on which the sole of your foot treads, just as I promised to Moses, from the wilderness of Arabia in the south and of this Lebanon in the north, even as far as the great river, the river Euphrates in the east, and all the land of the Hittites, that's Canaan, as far as the great Mediterranean Sea, toward the west shall be your territory. No man will be able to stand before you to oppose you. As long as you live, just as I was present with Moses, so will I be with you. I will not fail you or abandon you. Be strong and confident and courageous. For you will give these people as an inheritance the land which I spoke to, I swore to their fathers, ancestors, to give to them. Only be strong and be very courageous. Be careful to do everything in accordance with the entire law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, so that you may prosper and be successful wherever you go. Verse number eight, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but, it shall it, but you shall read it and meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything in accordance with all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous and then you will be successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified or dismayed, intimidated. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. I've read, just read Joshua chapter 1 verse 1 to 9. So let's begin from there. So the book of Joshua opens after the death of Moses. Now, the first thing I will say here is we need to, all of us need to know that each one of us, especially if you are if you are, um, what's the word? You are blessed enough to have someone who is a spiritual cover over you, speaking over you right now and all of that. I want you to always bear in mind that you, while you would continue to honor these people, you will not always be under their cover for all of life. A time is going to come, and for most of us, this is the time that God is transitioning us out of the places where we hid under the cover of other people. And it is time for us to step, um, step up and put up our big boy pants and take territory for kingdom. Now, you say, why do I say this? Because if I take you back to Genesis chapter 1, every single one of us was called to go and replenish the earth. For most people, this is the season. Or for a lot of us, this is the season. It is time for us to step out. Now, for that to happen, for Joshua, Moses had to die. It's not necessarily about the fact that someone is died. It's just that the era is changing. The seasons are shifting. And if a season shifts 
and you are not, um, what's the word? And you are not um, paying attention to the fact that the season has shifted. Then what will happen is you may not be able to get in where you are supposed to get in. If I will take you to the book of John and use the example of the man at the edge of the pool of Bethesda. There was a time and a day and a season when the angel will come and do what? Stir the waters. What is supposed to happen after that happens is that there would be, um, what's it called? The, the moment the waters are stirred, there is a healing virtue around that place. The first person that gets into that pool receives their healing. And so if you were at the edge of that pool and you came to be healed and the waters were stirred and you did not step in, then obviously that was how the man stayed there for 38 years. He every time and his excuse was every time they stirred the water before he could get in, someone else got in. I have come to say to us today that this whole thing that we, the word over is gone through will open to us the opportunity for great service and for great ministry. For us to step up and take territory. And when I say ministry, I don't mean everyone needs to open a church. I don't mean everyone needs to get on the street and preach. I mean that there is a vista opened for each and every one of us to step up to the plate. And be God's ambassador in the earth. So I don't want anyone to be, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't want any one of us to be caught unaware. This, the reason why we started this study is so that every one of us will be thinking about it. Every one of us will be praying about it. Every one of us will be talking to God about it. That the season is shifting and we ought to be ready. Because what I saw in verse 1 of chapter 1 of Joshua was, now it happened that, the death of, uh, that after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun. It wasn't the people of Israel that came to Joshua and said, Moses is dead. It wasn't um, someone that wrote uh, Joshua um, and uh, sent Joshua an email to ask him, do you recognize that, Joshua, that Moses is dead? As a matter of fact, Moses went everywhere with Joshua. So even on the day that Joshua, Moses was taken by God, Joshua was in the vicinity. So it wasn't news to Joshua that Moses, Moses had passed. But it was expedient for God to announce the season. Now, the Lord will announce the season to each and every one of us differently. He will say to some people, Ho, oh, how I want you to get up and leave Lagos and go to Oshobo or something. But for most of us, we will not receive that particular instruction. We will just know inside of us that something has shifted and it is time to wake up and be the person that God has called us to be. This is a clarion call to say to every one of us, may you not miss the way. May you not miss the call in this season in the name of Jesus. Now let's hear what God said to him. In verse number two, he said, Moses, my servant is dead. Now therefore, arise. Now therefore, arise. Now therefore, arise. In Hebrew, the verb arise is an instruction to get ready to fulfill a command. Somewhat like if you were in the military and you hear the word attention, it means that your commander is chief in chief wants to say something, wants to say something. And so you need to pay attention. It may also mean that those instructions you have heard, this is the season. You need to wake up and begin to ask yourself or begin to ask God, what is my next step? What is my first step? What do I need to do now? So God said to Joshua, arise. In the Amplified, it says, to take his place. There were three things that, three assignments that Joshua had. Number one was to take the people and cross over the Jordan. Number two was to conquer the land that the Lord is giving them. Number three was to establish their mark upon that land. I'll go through it again. Jo what God was saying to Joshua was arise. Number one, cross over the Jordan. Because the moment they, they crossed over the Jordan, truly, truly, the seasons had changed. Cross over the Jordan. Number two, conquer the land. Number three, Establish it as your territory. 
So Joshua was coming into the fulfillment of a promise that was made over a thousand or maybe 800 years to, 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 to first to, to, to Abraham. This was the land that God called Abraham out of all of the Chaldees to go get. Check how many generations have passed. <coughs> Excuse me. It is now time for people to go get into that land. And guess the one that is meant to lead them, Joshua. The one that valued the presence of God. So he said, my, Moses, my servant is dead. Arise. Get ready to fulfill the command. And he goes and says, I have given you. He says, arise, cross over this Jordan. My brothers and my sisters, you can't take territory you refuse to cross over. You can't take territory you refuse to advance towards. You cannot take territory you refuse to take responsibility for. The first thing that God said to him is cross over. Cross over. That meant that this was not an announcement to be viewed off the screen. That meant this was not an announcement for you to hear via Facebook Live and go home back home and be the same. This was an announcement that the Lord, the God of heaven, was making by himself. And what he wanted Joshua to do was get up. Joshua had to take a step. My brothers and my sisters, if after all this that the world has gone through, this morning at the commanding your morning, I said, God forbid that we will return to normal. If after all this that the world has gone through, we arise in the dawn of that new day, and all of all we look is, oh, praise God, it, has, it is now the dawn of a new day, and you go back and continue to do life the way you've done it, you will be a waste. But I know you are not called to be a waste. So we need to pay attention. Joshua had to be listening to hear what God was saying in this time. He said to him, cross over the Jordan, you and all these people. Do you know that there are people that are, what's the word I'm looking for? There are people that are part of your destiny. There are people that you have been assigned to. There are people that cannot go over until you are the hem of affairs. There are people that may never get where they are going unless you dig, begin to take steps towards the place that you are going. He says, cross over the Jordan, over this Jordan, you and all these people into the land which I am giving to them. Something is instructive as I looked at this scripture. He didn't say the land that I'm giving to you. So this was not a land because you will soon find out that Joshua did not get land. He said, the land I'm going to give to the people, but I want you to lead them there. The land I'm going to give to the people, the land that I promised to give to the people, that you are the one that is going to take them there. My brothers and my sisters, in this new dispensation, I was talking with my big brother a few, a couple of days ago. And one, um, what he kept saying to me over and over was that we cannot do it the way we used to do it. He said, we can no longer do it the way we used to do it. You have to be willing to take territory, even if you will not get assigned a parcel of land. We cannot get into the next dispensation in selfishness, thinking about me, myself, and I. What we work in this season is to ask the God of heaven, what have you called me to do? And once you recognize what you've called, been called to do, stick with it. That's what is going to happen in this new season. So he said to him, into the land which I'm giving them to the sons of Israel, verse number three, I have given you every place on which the sole of your foot treads, just as I promised Moses. This is huge comfort for me personally, that whatever way my territory is going to expand after this time out, I have a promise in verse number three. Of the book of Joshua chapter 1. That every place the sole of my feet would touch. Has been promised me and has been given. The reason why Joshua is going to get where he's going. Will not be because. He was a great person. 
Because as we continue to study, you will see that Joshua had his own faults and his own weaknesses as well. It will not be because Joshua is special. That's not why he would take this territory. The reason why Joshua will be able to take this territory is very simple. It will be because God has given it to him. It will be because even though the promise had tarried for a long time, the culmination of the day of manifestation had come. And because the culmination of the manifest day of manifestation had come, what was going to happen immediately was that Joshua would be able to take this territory. I am again saying it now. No, I'm not. I'm just one housewife somewhere trying to make a living. Just trying to do life the way I know it. But if you will miss this announcement that the time, the harvest is ripe and the time has come. And not only is the harvest ripe and the time come, but that God has released a promise that where you step in, he will give you. You may have to repeat this time. But my prayer is that we would hear him. That your eyes will be open. That the purpose in the nest you will see it. And you will leave it in Jesus name. Verse number 4. From the wilderness of Arabia in the south. And this Lebanon in the north. Even as far as the great river. The river Euphrates in the east. All the land of the Hittites. As far as the great Mediterranean sea. Toward the west shall be your territory. There's something instructive. That we, in this new dispensation, God will not be ambiguous. There will be no ambiguity in the instructions that you are receiving. God is not going to be speaking to us in Proverbs. He's not going to be speaking to us in parables. Look at what he said to Joshua. Because it was time, he said to Joshua, he, from here to there, from there to there, from there to there. He pointed out the boundaries for Joshua. What that meant was Joshua had an idea what he was supposed to be fighting to take. What that meant was if someone, somewhere, so a, 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 a piece of land, no matter how great it was, was outside this territory that God had mentioned, Joshua was not supposed to be concerned with it. How many people will remain in the tabernacle? How many people will stay long enough in the presence of God? That they will lend the voice of God enough to recognize what has shifted and what their portion is in it. That will be the challenge. You can spend all this time on social media. You can spend it complaining how your government is not giving aid to the people. You can spend it quarreling about, you know, uh, quarreling and fighting against the people who came from abroad and brought corona, uh, COVID-19 to Nigeria. You can do all of these things. But I'm praying this morning that we will not miss the fact that there is territory to take and it is time. That we will not miss, miss the space, the parameters or the boundaries so that we can step into what God is calling us to. This is a clarion call going out again. The Yorubas will say, Koni Legbo, Kosofun Loko. You need to hear don't take my word for it. Go back and ask God. Tarry in his presence long enough. Let it be that he can confirm to you that there is something coming. And you need to be ready for it. Because of time I would move on. Verse number 5. No man will be able to stand before. No man will be able to stand before you. To oppose you. As long as you live. Just as I was present with Moses, so will I be with you. I will not abandon you. I will not fail you or abandon you. God is speaking again. Now, one of the, uh, this morning I was having the conversation about Joshua with my husband. This, and he was saying to me that when, when you go past chapter 12, it's going to be monotonous. Because there you will just see Joshua dividing land and dividing land and dividing land. It's going to be a lot of routine. The point I'm making is that it's exciting right now because we're hearing that there is land to be taken. But you need to recognize and pay attention that God says, I will be with you. 
I will not fail you and aband or abandon you. What that means is that even in this next dispensation, there will be times that it will be a lot more difficult than it is at the beginning. There will be time that it will be hard. There will be time when it will just be routine work you are doing. There will be time when it will just be like you are marking time. One thing I don't want us to forget, because it is there in the scripture and I can see it, it is that God is with us even in that time. God is with us even in that time. Yes, we will have no opposition. He will sit with us and he says, I will not fail you and I will not abandon you. There is no comfort like that comfort for me. To know that two things that I fear the most, rejection and failure, God is taking care of it. He says, I will not fail you and I will not abandon you. I will not fail you and I will not abandon you. So therefore, here's the thing that is exciting for me and is a question that I want us to ponder on. If God will not fail you, if God will not abandon you, what exactly will be in the new that you will not square your shoulders and go take? What exactly can be standing in your path after God told you, I will not fail you, I will not abandon you? That will be difficult for you to get up and go and take. In these times, many of us, our eyes have been opened to the fact that where we were was not where we were supposed to be. The question is, if you knew you would not fail, and you will not fail because God has promised he won't fail you, and he won't abandon you, what will be too much for you to go take after this time out? We need to pay attention. Verse number six. Be strong and confident and courageous. For you will give these people as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers, their ancestors, to give them. Be strong, number one. Be confident, number two. Be courageous, number three. I am reading it from the Amplified because if you read it from the King James Version, it just feels like he's repeating the same thing. It says, be of good courage. And then you begin to wonder, what is good courage? But when you get to verse number, yes, be of good courage. That's all he says in verse number six in the King James. But in the Amplified, he broke it down. Number one, you need strength. Number one, you need strength. Reminds me of a day that Elijah was going to go on the last journey of his life. And God woke him up and said, arise, eat, because the journey is far is ahead. The Lord is saying we would need strength. I have no other place to build strength that I know other than the word of God. You cannot just continue to feed from the palm of other people's hands. You need to go and sit with the word for yourself. You need to feed, you need to learn, you need to build muscles for what you are about to carry. The second thing he said, be confident. People will say to you that, uh -uh, why are you doing it again? They've done it before. People would come try to use their opinion and their own fears to stop you from moving forward. The Lord says you need confidence in that season. That there will be a confidence that is required for you to get into that space and play properly. Do not let any voice be the voice that discourages you. The third thing that he says is that you will need courage. You would need courage. That you need courage in, uh, presupposes for me that there will be opposition. And so when you get to the place where they are, the people are looking bigger than you, when you stand in front of the walls of Jericho, when a tiny eye, a tiny city of eye will take you down, remember that you need courage. You cannot run away with your tails between your legs. You need to go back to God and you need to come back out. Remember, 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 you need strength. You need to be confident and you need courage. Verse number seven, it says, only be strong and be very courageous. Only be strong and be very courageous. The Lord is repeating himself over and over and over. Will you be strong? Some of us, it won't even take until after the lockdown. Before the telephone, call, the telephone call will come, that to announce to you the shift that I'm talking about right now. And your first response will be fear. But will you be strong? Will you be very courageous? 
He's, and then he goes on to say, he says, be careful to do everything in accordance with the entire law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left so that you may prosper and be successful wherever you go. I can come here forever, but I'm really trying to do a whole chapter today. I don't think I'm doing a great job at it, but I'm going to do my best. So therefore, part of this challenge is that some of us, because we're hearing that new things will happen, some of us will be looking for new instructions. What if your instruction is to go back and do that which you have always known to do? What if your instruction is not to look for another law, is to just take the law that Moses had received? And do what? Dust it up and begin to pay attention to it. What if there is nothing new that they are going to say? What if all your instructions were the instructions you had been given in the last season? The land has changed, but the, the, season, the, the, land has changed, but the instructions had not changed. The word of God is not going to become a lot more civilized because it's a new, it's a new season you are walking into. If you want to excel, you have to understand that it is still the good old Bible. It is still the word of God that is contained in the word of God as you know it now. That will be your yardstick. It will be your standard. It will be your foundation. It will be your sustenance. It will be your mainstay. He said to Joshua, he says, be careful to do everything in accordance with the entire law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not fear or do not turn from it to the right or to the left so that you may prosper and be successful. I want to say it one more time before I move on because of time. The season may have changed. The territory may look different. But if you decide to transact Away from the word of God. Ma and me, I don't know what can happen. But I do know that the only way we get the right instructions is to consistently go back to the word. In verse number 8, this is the Joshua scripture everybody knows. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. But you shall read it and meditate on it. Day and night. So that you may be careful to do. So therefore, if God said, pay attention to the instruction that Moses had received in the past. He is saying the only way that you can understand what to do in the new is to pay attention to what had been said to you in the past. It is for you to go back and dust out your notes, read your Bible again. Not have someone read it to you. Read it by yourself. He said, then he said, read it. Then he went on, he said, Meditate on it, i.k.a. study it. Don't just read it and walk away. When you finish reading, study it. Study it. Study it. Studying the, the Bible means that you have a concordance open. It means that you are paying at, you pray and ask the Holy Spirit to speak to you. It means that you have pen and paper waiting. You are writing what occurs to you. This begins to form the basis of the instruction for your life. Any instruction that is not taken out of the word may fail. Scratch that. It will fail. Then he said to him, he said, you don't just read it in the morning. <laughs> he said, you read it day and night. You don't just meditate on it in the morning. You meditate on it day and night. Bring the word closer, my brethren. Bring the word of God closer. Hide it in your heart. Pay attention to the details of your instruction. Verse, it says if you do that, you know, I like the King James, it says you will have, then you will have good success. Then you will, you, will, you will make your way prosperous and have good success. Where the Lord is bringing us to, there will be great success in that place. There will be great prosperity in that place. Yesterday at the seven day prayer, I did tell us that God says he is releasing fresh virtue of healing upon his children. 
So some of us, we have to go to hospitals after this time to lay hands on the sick so that they may recover. There is great prosperity in that place. There will be good success in that place. But how you access it is by paying attention to the word of God. That is how we would access, access it. And he said in verse number 9, he says, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified or dismayed or intimidated. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. I think that this is for me personally. Because I get terrified easily and I get intimidated easily. easily. But I also know the things that God has spoken to me for that season and he's speaking to me. The only reason why I will not move into them is if I'm afraid and I'm intimidated by whatever. But I will take this word to heart. I will hide it in my heart. The psalmist says, your word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against God. I will hide this word in my heart. Have you not commanded me to be strong and courageous? Have you not told me, Lord, not to be terrified, dismayed, or intimidated? Have you not told me that you will go where, with me wherever I go? My brothers and my sisters, you need to hold on to this anchor. Because just because God is the one that is giving us that opportunity to bring in a great harvest does not mean that there would not be opposition. However you, or whatever the opposition will be that will be in front of you, how you win is not by what you know for yourself. It's by remembering every single day that God goes with you. I remember he says, he says, if you make your bed in hell, I will be there with you. In Psalm 23, he says, if, even though I, even though I, how does he say it again? When I go through the valley of the shadow of death, thou art with me. It's a huge comfort ahead of this journey for you to know that God will be with you. Then from verse 10, we begin to see Joshua move. In verse 10, he says, Then Joshua commanded the officers of the people, Kawai. When I saw this thing as I was, I was studying, I was like, wait. Joshua did not even say, let me go bury my dead. Joshua did not say, let me go and divide Moses' um, inheritance amongst his children. Joshua did not say, let me go and visit Moses' widow if he still had one. The moment Joshua heard God, in verse number 10, the Bible said he got up and he called the officers of the people. Which meant that some of this work that we will be called to do, we won't be able to do it by ourselves. The team that we are working with would matter. Do you have a team now that is crisis mode? For you to release into the, into, the, um, into the territory when it is time to move. Who belongs in your team? It had to be that Joshua had been relating with these people for him to be able to call them and begin to give them commands immediately. Joshua recognized something that I hope we will recognize today. He recognized without a shadow of doubt that this was not an instruction that could keep for another day. My brothers and my sisters, do not believe me. Just believe God. This instruction to prepare and be ready for, to take this territory is not an instruction that you can keep and go bury your dead and come back. It is not an instruction for you to keep and finish mourning over COVID-19 victims before you come out. This is an instruction that you must arise and push immediately you hear it. He said to the officers of the people in verse 11, go throughout the camp and command the people saying, prepare your provisions. Prepare your provisions. Are you ready for what it is that you are about to step into? What have you prepared to carry with you? He said, prepare your positions for within three days. You are to cross this river Jordan to go in and take possession of the land which your Lord, which the Lord your God is giving you to possess as an inheritance. Folks, it is inheritance time. It is inheritance time. It is inheritance time. But it will take you a trip to get there. It will take you a trip to get there. Do you have your provisions ready? 
Even if you did, today is the day you wake up and you begin to ask God. Not be the me, ask God. Say, Lord, what are the provisions I need for the next? What are the things that I need for the next? What do I need to possess for the next? What do I need to put together for the next? Remember that these people had lived in the wilderness for 40 years by this time. Think about it carefully. What could they really have in the wilderness? But if you remember, after a while, they had moved away. Manna had ceased during some part, part of that time. And they had started to till the ground. So they had provision. They had provision. Some of the places that the Lord will send us to, we will have to bring our provision to them first. You cannot, this is not the dispensation where you, he, you reap the harvest by intimidating people. This is when you get in the trenches with them. Some of us to be able to reach the harvest that God is calling us to. We may need to get in the trenches and rebuild with those who need to rebuild. Whatever it is that your possession or your provisions will look like. The one thing that I can announce is that you need to prepare. You need to prepare. Do not be like the five virgins who didn't take oil in their lamp. Do you have enough oil in your lamp? This is the clarion call again. Prepare yourself. Prepare yourself. Prepare yourself. Prepare yourself. Prepare yourself. Will you please prepare yourself? In verse number 12. It says, to the Rebanites and to the Gadites and to the half-tribe of Manasseh, Joshua said, Remember the word which Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you, saying, The Lord your God is giving you rest, peace, and will give you this land east of the Jordan. Your wives and your children and your cattle shall be allowed to stay in the land which Moses gave you on this instant side of the Jordan. But you shall grow across the river before your brothers. The other tribes armed for battle, all your brave warriors, and you shall help them conquer and take possession of their land. The thing I love about this is that you cannot be so focused on taking your own territory that you leave your brother behind. The people of God, the people of Reuben, the people of Manasseh, half a tribe, the tribe of Manasseh, where they were camped was their own inheritance. But Joshua told them, he said, I know you have come to your inheritance already. But we will not leave you here. We will leave your wives and your children here. You still have to go with us to go and fight. What does this tell me? It tells me that some of us, the territory we will be fighting for will not be our own territory. We will be those, there will be territory for those that are Oh, uh, uh, the Lord is put over us. There will be territory for our neighbors. But my responsibility is to show up and put my shoulder to the work and say my brother doesn't have a land allotted to him yet. I will stay with him until he receives his allocation. This is not the time where the church of Jesus Christ squares against each other. This is the time where the church of Jesus Christ will lock arms. Because this work of the harvest that is ahead of us, we cannot do it alone. No one of us has everything that it takes to do it alone. Pay attention, all ye children of God. You don't belong to a house that has everything, that has everything. Every house has a part of the fabric. But we are painting a complete picture. This will be the time where we would lock arms. This is the time where we will come to each other's aid. This is the time where we will not be intimidated by the gift in another house. This is the time where we would um, cross-pollinate, if you like. This is the time where we would recognize that doing it together is the best way. How we got where we are today is doing it each alone. The Lord will not tolerate a doing by ourselves going forward. We must come together to get this done. 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 I hope you're hearing. 
he who has ears to hear. Let him hear. In verse number 15, verse number 15, until the Lord gives your brothers rest as he has given you, and they also have taken possession of the land which the Lord your God is giving them, then you shall be allowed to return to your own land and take possession of that which Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave you beyond the Jordan toward the sunrise. If you think that you can begin to take your own territory and not think about your brothers and your sisters, can I announce to you that it will not work? I love what the Lord is about to open before us. I love the fact that the old order is going to die off. There will be a new way for us to get these things done. There will be a new way for us to get this thing done. Some of us will hear the instructions clearly. Others of us will have to just trust the ones who heard and remember that we are brothers. Because in this new territory, there will be great adversity as well. There will be great adversity. There will be, um, what is the word now that I'm looking for? Adversary. And until we band it together, we may not be able to do it well. If you decide to take for your house alone, here is what will happen. It will not work. The way we get this done is we get it done together. The way we get this done is we get it done together. Collaboration is the word in this season. It has been long coming. Verse 16, they answered Joshua saying, all that you have commanded us, we will do. And wherever you send us, we will go. They didn't ask Joshua to show them his credentials. Will you trust the God of heaven when he manifests the people in front of us? They said to Joshua, they said, all that you have said, we will do. All that you have said, you, we, we will do. Wherever you are asking us to go, we will go. You know that a house divided against itself cannot stand, right? We must come together to do this. There is a harvest awaiting us. We must come together to do this. There is a great harvest awaiting us. We must come together to do this. There is a massive harvest awaiting us. We must come together to do this. There is a great harvest in front of us. We must come together to do this. They said to Joshua, all that you have commanded us, we will do. And wherever you send us, we will go. Verse 17, just as we obeyed Moses in all things, so will we obey you. So will you obey you. Only may the Lord your God be with you as he was with Moses. My brothers and my sisters, the only credential you would need to see in this time is do you have a witness in your spirit that God goes with the other person? The Lord will open your eyes and your spirit you will recognize. It is the season of the remnant, you all. It is the season of the remnant, you all. It is the season of the remnant, remnant you all. It is the season of the remnant. It is the day we wake up and we lock on arms and we stand and we say if the lord gave us this harvest we will take it and all the glory we go to him it is the season of the harvest the people said as long as god is with you moses as he was uh, uh, joshua as he was with moses then there is nothing you will tell us that we will not do if you read the book of joshua joshua was one leader that the people consistently followed every step of the way if we go through what we've gone through right now and we come out on the other side and we refuse to go with each other, may God forbid, God forbid that we will waste this experience. I will not waste the experience. But you see, it is an individual choice we all have to make. If we all, by today, there are a hundred devices I can see on this call, for instance. If everyone on the call today decides that I will lock arms with my brother and my sister, I will band together with them, and I will do only the will of God with them. If we decide, if I decide in my corner of the earth where I am right now, and you decide wherever you are, 
It will be easier for us to work with each other. And that's what we must do to bring in this great harvest that the Lord is speaking about. In verse number 18, they say to, jo to Joshua, any man who rebels against your command and does not obey everything that you command him shall be put to death. Did you see that the leader did not need to intimidate the people? The leader did not need to threaten. This is people who have come to put their hearts to the work by themselves. They were the ones that were saying, if anyone amongst us decides to break rank, we will reward him with death because we recognize that this is the season of collaboration. It says that one shall be put to death. Then the greatest words that I read in Joshua chapter 1, the last five words in Joshua chapter 1, only be strong and courageous. It was not only God that said to Joshua, be strong and courageous. Even the people could tell that Joshua could do with strength and courage. Are you going to be, what's the word, supporting your leaders in this time? Because not all of us will be leaders. I, I mean, we'll be in front of, the, of whatever it is that this is. Some of us, we have to follow other people. The question is, will you recognize how much your leader needs strength and how much he needs courage? Will you be praying for him? Will you be standing with him? Will you be giving him the assurance that he needs to make the right decisions to get all of us where we need to go? Church of Jesus Christ, we have to do this. We have to do this. It cannot be business as usual. It will not work. It is the time for us to receive territory. And what the study of the book of Joshua, whether we study three chapters before then, before it, this blows over, or we study five chapters, or whatever, I need you to study ahead in your homes. I need you to begin to take a look at it. I want to importantly speak to the God of heaven. Say, Lord, show me. Say, Lord, show me. Can you see indeed that fragmentation is not working? Can you see that this thing is not, um, they did not tell the church, church A to stay at home and church B to go out. Have you not seen that this did not, was not a respecter of persons? Did you not notice that the big man is at a peril, the young man is at a, the, uh, the, 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 the big man or the rich man is at a risk, the, the poor man is at a risk? Did you not see that those who lived in de developed countries are at a risk? Those who live in developing countries are at a risk? This is everyone. This is everyone. This is everyone. The Lord wants to take us. He wants to take us in. He wants to take us in. He wants to take us in. This is not the war of the, the, war of the sexes. Let's stop this thing about oh, whether a man can do it or a woman can do it. God, the spirit of God is genderless. Whether male, whether female, whether young, whether old, whether rich, whether poor. The way we get this done is by the word of God, by the assurance of his promises, and by banding together. We all need strength. We all need courage. If you will pray with me this morning and begin to ask the Lord, Father, in the name of Jesus, as I prepare for this territory, Father, Lord, show me the things that I need to know. Father, open my eyes, O oh God. Help me to see them. Help me to get in on the ground level. Father, Lord, if I'm supposed to hold up the hands of another, may I not want to step out and be in front. Father, wherever you plant me in this season, may I deliver on the harvest you've called me to. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. My brothers and my sisters, pray. We need to pray for the church of Jesus Christ, the world over. Our names and appellations and denominations do not count in this next season. We must come out and do the work of the one that sent us. We all must come out and do the work of the one that sent us. We all must come out and do the work of the one that sent us. The Lord said to Joshua, My servant Moses is dead. You arise 
my brothers and sisters, I don't know what Moses would look like for you. But can I announce to you that he's either dead already he's, or he's about to die. But you cannot wallow in the place of mourning. You cannot wallow in the place of fear. You need to get up. We must lock arms. We must lock arms. We can only do this if we do it together. The harvest is ripe. The laborers will not be few by his grace and his mercy. Why am I so sure? Because you who have heard me today will tell he who has not heard. We will all come together and we will do this together. Let's not waste this. Let's go out and bring in the harvest. The land has been promised us from all over. The land has been promised us for a long time. But today we begin to step in. Today we begin to step in. Father Lord, I honor your name. I give you praise, oh God. Thank you for this word, oh God. And thank you for your grace to push through. Lord, I know that it will take a while for it to settle in some of our spirits. Yes, Lord. Lord, let your Holy Spirit go ahead and do the work. Amen. Lord, Lord, for even those of us who think that we understand it right now, in your mercy, break it down for me. Even Amen. me, 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 Mark Mode, break me, break it down Amen. for me. May Amen. I not be the one who brought the message and did not partake Amen. in the work. Father, in the name of Jesus, break it down for me. Amen. Father, for everyone who would hear you, O oh God, teach them where to put their shoulders Amen. to the work. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, let us not let this rab- harvest rot, O oh God. Yes. Father, may we not allow this harvest to rot, O oh God. Amen. Father, may we not allow this harvest to rot, O oh God. Amen. Lord, we receive the spirit of courage this morning. Amen. Lord, we receive confidence in you this morning. Amen. Lord, we receive boldness, O oh God. Amen. Lord, we receive strength from on high, O oh, on high, O oh God. Amen. We will do that which you've called us to yes, do. Lord. And your name will be glorified. Yes, we will not be of the generation of them that draw back. Yes, Lord. We will step forward in this, O oh God. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, we worship you. Thank you Father. We give you praise. Thank you, Glory, honor, and adoration. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. amen and amen. amen. I'll give like the next five minutes. If you have questions, if you have questions, I'll um, just give time for you to um, ask me the questions and um, let's see if I can answer them. If you ask me a question and I can't answer, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say to you, I will come back to it next week. The Lord asked me to study, the, to teach the book of Joshua and I started. Nothing prepared me for what has happened this morning. Nothing prepared me for what has happened this morning. And I'm trusting God to help us. I'm trusting God to help us. I'm trusting God to help us. Do you have a question? If you don't have a question, would you like to share your walkie ways? If you do not have a question, would you like to share your walkie ways? You know you can inbox me, right? If you have a question and you you are not able to answer it by the time I log off, you can inbox me your question. What I am determined is that we will not make mistakes. What I'm determined is I will say it as I'm told. And I'm grateful to God that all of you have the Holy Spirit. So because you have the Holy Spirit, go to him and tell him, Lord, is this woman telling the truth? Or is she just talking? And I'm, I, am, I, am, I, am, I am confident that he will tell you whether this is his voice or whether this is someone making it up. What I just beg you is do not give up. What I beg you is do not be intimidated. What I beg you is to be expectant. Lift your eyes. Look up to the hills. That's where our help will come from. And what I beg you above all is walk with your brother. Walk with your sister. Do not discard what the foundations that have been laid. It is time for us to build upon them. And we will build in the manner that he's called us to. Father, Lord, we thank you. Why did Moses have to die for Joshua to rise? Um, I think that because God is sovereign and he's the one that determines the times and the seasons for everyone. I think that's what it is. 
Moses' job in the life of Joshua was probably to teach him. So I'm grateful to God that he's able to do it. Somebody says, I'm facing a death threat for leading my family in the path of truth. Should I continue to lead? Yes, Alfred. I don't know what else you would do but to lead. I'm trusting God that he would contend with them that contend with you. Amen. But in this dispensation, honestly, our life is nothing compared to the glory that shall arise from this time. So yes, just focus on what the Lord has called you to. And what I do know for sure is that God will contend with the things that you have not, you cannot contend with. He said, do not be afraid, be strong and courageous. Do not allow them to intimidate you. Your life is not in their hands. The Lord will take us where we need to go. We are praying for you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, everyone, for joining the prayer call this morning. Um, if you have a question, because I'm about to log off now, you can send the question to me, and I'll send it to you. Um, the person that asked, why did Moses have to die before Joshua had to arise? Probably because it was the season. Plus, remember that the children of Israel dilly a lot. So sometimes it may take man, may be the one that has delayed. But we have come to the head. And what I know that God will do is that he would use any one of us that will arise to the challenge. My prayer is that you will find grace to arise in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much. I'm sorry the videos didn't work. Um, I think that the networks are struggling, uh, maybe because of the overload. So even though video was what I wanted to do so that we can stream on different platforms, what I'll probably try and do is just put it on my app as well. I tried to put it on my app today, but it didn't work. But I would download this and put it on the app so that you can always go back there to listen to it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. God bless you and have a great rest of your day. Thank you for keeping the faith. Bye-bye.